Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at this feedback effect, which is turbulent, wavy, beautiful, and simple. Um, this is kind of a back to basics approach and should be a pretty quick video, uh, but I wanted to share because I love the way it's coming together and I think that a good old feedback system is never out of place. So with that said, uh, we can just kind of jump into things. So in this case, I'll actually just delete everything and we can start again. So I'm going to use a video file. Uh, it can be any video file you like. In this case, uh, I'm going to use this drone footage that I like. Um, and so that'll be our kind of baseline. Um, I'm just going to collapse this down and call it Turbulent Feedback. And this way we have a, a component that I can start using for all of our parameters and stuff like that. So I'm going to then drop a fit. This fit, uh, I'm going to drag and drop this resolution onto the resolution here. Um, of our component editor so that we now have a parameter that can be tweaked. I'll set this to like 1920 by 1080 right now and then set the fit type to outside so that uh, no matter what our resolution is, even if we go to like a different aspect ratio uh, or a different aspect ratio, we always have a nice cropped uh, image there. As a side note, uh, you'll notice this toolbar, that's the function store toolbar. Uh, you can go to function stores, GitHub and download it. It's open source and really great for touch designer. <clears throat> All right, so now we have our fit and then we'll just drop a null and I'll just call this image fitted. And from here, we can actually get into our feedback effect. So first, um, I'm going to drop the feedback and then we're going to have displace at the end. We'll drop a null at the end of our feedback. I'll call that null and feedback. I'm going to drop that onto our feedback. And so now we're kind of building the, the outline here of what our system is going to look like. Now, first, uh, we're going to start by just using a simple slope. And that slope will be used to do our displacement. So I'm actually going to make a couple changes here first, though. We're going to change green to vertical luminance and blue to zero. Our zero point is going to be zero, and our strength is going to be four. And so now we have a red and green channel slope map. We can wire that into our displace. Now this displace weight needs to come down quite a bit. And I'm going to just set that at like 0.2 for now. The source midpoint, because we just changed our midpoint here to zero, should be zero as well. And then we'll change this to red and green. Now drop down another null, maybe call that background, and we can display it. Okay, so there is some feedback happening, but obviously there's there's a lot going on and doesn't look very good at the moment. So I'm gonna insert a null after this feedback, and there's a couple things that I wanna do. So first, instead of actually displacing this feedback um, with the slope, I'm going to take a level off of our fitted image. Going to set that opacity to something pretty small, like 0.02. And then I'm actually going to use an over and comp this little low opacity slice of our base image to our feedback. And actually that needs to be this way. And so now we have kind of our base image over our feedback. And we're going to be displacing actually that 
instead of the straight feedback image, which is nice because it brings in a little bit more uh, return, let's say, to our fitted image. And then that's also probably an, a value that I will want to drag and drop onto my parameters, which will then just be keeping track of up here. Okay, so this is getting there, um, but we can do a little bit more work. So a technique that I picked up a while ago was for actually from Paqueta 12 originally, and that is using a perpendicular vector field in a displacement feedback loop, which I'm going to take and extend a little bit uh, here. So the way that we can do a perpendicular vector field is to actually take a GLSL and have that come right off of our slope. Now I'm going to edit this GLSL, um, make sure this is a little bit bigger. And what we're going to be doing in this GLSL is first, I'm going to make a variable called slope. And then we'll have another VEC4 called color, which we'll just set equal to our slope for right now. Now, first we need to uh, switch R and G channels. So then you say slope dot RG equals slope dot GR. And so there our red and green channels are flipped. Now we say uh, slope dot R is gonna be multiplied by negative one. And so that's gonna just flip our R component um, and actually we can make a new variable, call it vec2 perp. And then, um, I think here we'll use our perp rg equals slope.gr and then perp.r times equals minus one. Uh, and then all we need to do is add that back to our original slope. So slope.rg plus equals perp, and now we're outputting this with our color. So this I'll call uh, perp vector. And now all we need to do is cross this perp vector with our slope. We can use that right in our displace. which will lead to some interesting uh, behavior as soon as we finish this off. So a couple other things that I wanna add. One is a blur, which I'm gonna go ahead and set the pre-shrink to like three and the filter size to something pretty high, like 25. Now, you can see this is kind of starting to come together a little bit. One other thing that I want to add is to actually change this slope so that it's not calculated right off of the feedback, but off of something a little bit nicer. And so I'm going to insert a noise down here. And instead of wiring this in the first component, I'm gonna wire it into the second component so that we can actually remap our noise based on this feedback. I'll drag and drop that resolution from our parameter in here and we'll set this to 16-bit uh, float mono, which as we can see uh, is really starting to impact things. Now, because we increase that to uh, mono, we'll need to go into the slope and set the pixel to 16-bit float RG, and that way we get uh, positive and negative R and G values for our slope. Now we can just middle mouse over this and confirm that our displacement and slope are both in 32 or 16 bit float RG. And this displace uh, is not, it's in 8 bit fixed. So we need to go and change that to be, I think, a 32 bit float uh, RGBA in this case, because we want maximum information for our colors. Now, the other thing that we want to do here probably on our noise is take harmonics down a little bit, 
scale it down also a little bit like this. So now it's scaled down to like 0.2 and maybe increase that period to something like two as well. Now we're using the noise then, uh, which we're blurring to calculate the slope that we're then taking the perpendicular uh, vector of and crossing those two together to get this displacement uh, vector field, which we are then using to displace this uh, feedback with a little bit of the low opacity input comped over the top. And what that does is because we're remapping this based on our feedback, there still retains a lot of the structure there, but I'm using the noise itself uh, to calculate the slope, which means that because it's mono, uh, some of the colors are just going to have less defined boundaries. And so the slopes uh, and the resulting displacement is a little bit smoother, which you can see if we take this noise off, there's a lot of kind of hard lines and color bleeding that doesn't look very good. And this noise really solves a lot of those problems. This blur, uh, the pre-shrink and the filter size, definitely something that we can experiment with increasing this uh, pre-shrink can do quite a bit. Now, the blur is something that gets pretty expensive. This is running at, well, between, let's say, one and two uh, milliseconds, and that's only a 1920 by 1080. Filter size down uh, will definitely help speed up that blur top, but it will lead to some other artifacts. So it's kind of all about balancing. Um, I think somewhere around, like, 20 and then something else that you could possibly do is turn this filter size down more maybe to like i don't know five but try the sample step uh, which leads to different effects and you can combine all of these together to kind of have some very interesting types of effects uh, that all can be composed in different ways um, so I'm going to put this sample step back to one for the moment. I'll just rotate my kernel a little bit there. And I'm going to leave the filter size set to 20 and my pre-shrink to three. Actually, maybe the pre-shrink up to like six. Uh, a couple other parameters that could be good to play with uh, by changing this noise amplitude you can really change how much things are being pushed around by the displacement, uh, which is potentially something good to play with. Exponent, similarly, there's, I don't really like that as much, but it does lead to some motion. Uh, and then finally, if you take down the harmonics, uh, there's kind of a much more soft type of noise um, that just has a different view. So I think maybe something like one level of harmonics, maybe two levels of harmonics are good. Um, and then you can just experiment with all these other values. Actually, I think I like a period of two where I had it originally the best. So I'm gonna keep that there. Um, but then maybe on the displace, we will want to have a displace weight parameter. So I'm actually gonna make that instead of dragging and dropping it. So we'll call it displace weight. Uh, we'll make it a float. Whoops, not a folder, a float. And then we can take that displace weight, drag it over here to the X, drag it over here to the Y. And the one thing we'll wanna do here is aspect correct this displacement and so we'll want to displace it a little bit um, more on the Y than the X. And so we can do that by using parent.par.resolution uh, W divided by parent.par.resolution H. Sorry, that's resolution uh, two and one. see if we put that at one and two. Okay, so actually it's one and two. I had that backwards. 
Um, and you can see that that displacement now is aspect corrected, which is different from if I displace them both by the same amount, which is important um, because it doesn't happen automatically. And so good to know that that's something you need to do. And so now we have our displace weight also as a parameter here. UV is always something that you can mess with um, to kind of have that like zooming feature, maybe just like a really slight amount of it could look okay. But I think I'm just gonna leave it at one for now. Um, just good to know that it's something you can, can mess around with if you like. And I think that is probably about all the parameters that we need for this effect. So like I said, it's an effect that I like a lot. I'm gonna drop down just like another movie so we can take a look at how this looks using a different image file. I'll turn off the grid. And so yeah, as you can see, it is pretty turbulent, pretty wavy. A lot of that comes from the noise. Um, you could also try, for example, like Perlin noise instead of simplex noise. And overall, as I said, it's very simple, it's pretty quick, and there are a lot of different extensions that you can look at to kind of take this and make it your own. I would strongly encourage everyone to try and, and push this in some ways that I have not. But I think it's a good place to stop for now. So thank you for everyone who's tuned in. I appreciate all the support on Patreon. I hope that you enjoyed this quick little uh, feedback tutorial, and I would love to see what you all make with this technique. So with that said, uh, thank you, and until next time, good luck out there.